Uh, in the next uh, session, in the next part, I would like to talk about advanced image analysis on the UKB wrap. Um, some of you, you may remember uh, my name from the very first uh, imaging uh, webinar we had in April. Uh, but officially, uh, I'm Andre, uh, and uh, I work at DNA Nexus as community engagement scientist. Uh, so I mostly focus on um, UKB data, uh, maybe here more specifically uh, into uh, imaging data. What is our agenda for today? I would like to cover um, a bit of uh, intro to image analysis. We covered a lot uh, in April, uh, but still I would like to keep some material here. Uh, then I would like to talk about uh, new software updates uh, and uh, about uh, three popular neuroimaging tools. Uh, we also uh, heard a lot um, about it uh, from uh, Fidel, but uh, this will be NiPipe, FSL, and FreeSurfer here specifically on the research analysis platform. Uh, then I would like to uh, talk about uh, tips and tricks for visualization on the platform. Uh, and, and at the end of uh, this part, I would like to provide, I would like to present a demo. Uh, we will be looking uh, at a notebook, uh, which will be presenting uh, how to work with NiPy on the wrap. Great. So here in this uh, section, in this presentation, I would like to present new cool features and uh, new cool functionalities uh, for image analysis on the wrap. Uh, uh, but actually here, for those who um, had no chance to uh, re watch a recording or attend the, the webinar we had in April. I am providing here a link uh, to this one uh, because uh, some of the material, some of the content here is building actually on what we said and what is the ter ter terminology uh, presented in April. Uh, what is also great, actually, Fidel uh, covered a lot of material about FSL, about FreeSurfer and the pipelines, and actually how the data, yeah, I mean, imaging data on the rep uh, are generated. So that is also great. We have, uh, we have right now uh, this background. Uh, this is perfect. But again, this is the link to our previous web webinar we are building uh, on. Great. So uh, one of the main pillars uh, of what we were talking in April uh, was that we were mentioning and we were trying to provide examples uh, on how to run uh, popular neuroimaging tools such as FSL, FreeSurfer on RAP, uh, but mostly we were trying to implement it via Docker solution. Uh, the main purpose or our main aim was actually to introduce these tools in order to compute more derived phenotypes or compute derived phenotypes. So just to start with some recap uh, or to do some intro to that, what is actually uh, image derived phenotype in general and what is actually image derived phenotype on the research analysis platform? This is very simple actually, it's just a number. This is just a number which represents uh, situation. So on the right side of this screen, let's consider brain anatomy and uh, image derived phenotype typically is kind of uh, number uh, which is representing, let's say, volume or some segmented parcelated part of the particular uh, brain area or structure. Uh, which is actually converted uh, to some number value, to some, to, some, to some value. So we can talk actually about um, hippocampus. And we can collect all these areas, all these numbers. We can extract all these uh, numbers from all participants of our interest, I would say, uh, and collect it into biobank. Uh, this could be represented uh, or visualized by histogram or saved uh, into some representation, which is then um, in the UKB data or on the wrap uh, represented or by or defined by data field. Uh, you can then access these volumes, these numbers, these image derived phenotypes on the platform in many ways. And we will be talking about that. Typically what then we can do with these image derived phenotypes, these are typically input for some subsequent or advanced analysis. 
uh, typically for some statistical analysis or machine learning applications, let's say more specifically in the um, world of uh, life science, it would be it could be GVAS or FIVAS studies. So just again, very simply, these are scalar values derived from raw imaging data. We have some available, but we can always compute more. And that's the reason why we are trying to introduce new pipelines, new tools, um, and new ways how to work with that. Um, all right, so one already mentioned tool, uh, well-known and popular and a very powerful tool for not just for extracting, not just for computing image-derived phenotypes, but just for many other image manipulations is FSL, developed by an Oxford group. Uh, we were running it last time via Docker image, but let's just to uh, do some recap of what, it, what FSL is. FSL is comprehensive li library of analysis tools. So it's consisting of, uh, of many features. And as I said, it's, it, it's mostly uh, to uh, compute image derived phenotypes. Uh, where you can access these image derived phenotypes actually computed by FSL, by the pipeline, uh, or parts of pipeline Fidel was talking about, you can find it in a cohort browser, UK BRAP cohort browser, or you can access it via DNA Nexus database. It's a database object in your uh, project on the platform. Uh, and one a typical operation for working with uh, uh, images and F uh, in FSL is BET command, uh, which uh, which does uh, school stripping, or in uh, other words, it's uh, brain extraction. So I would like to show you uh, some examples uh, how to do that. Uh, of course, there are other examples or useful commands. Um, for example, using FSL, you can do segmentation, you can do registration, or you can do many other mathematical manipulations of the images. So let's consider the following situation. Um, uh, in this um, fi figure or, or, or plot, uh, you can see brain with, um, in three orientations. Um, and let's consider this is in the raw in image or some image as input for the FSL. So we can apply uh, skull stripping, I mean this uh, BET command. And after that, this will generate, so as input, we have some volume data, typically in nifty format, and as output, we will get uh, another nifty format, but the result now, uh, it's after skull stripping. So that's that's one uh, that's one really simple, typically preprocessing step done via FSL. Right, and now maybe more in programmatical way, more technical things, how to actually run it on the platform. And last time we saw uh, the following situation, we were trying to reuse or load publicly available Docker image uh, and apply uh, this skull stripping operation uh, via DNA Nexus tool, which is called Swiss Army Knife. Uh, this was relatively quick. Uh, we commented on the configuration. Uh, and it worked, but this time I would like to tell you more about new software updates uh, and uh, what you can do possibly uh, right now on the platform. So yeah, perfect. So let's uh, let's continue with actually the new software updates, uh, which are uh, NiPipe, FSL, and FreeSurfer on RAP. We just had chance to um, hear something about FSL. Uh, FreeSurfer is uh, also tool uh, mostly used for computing image derived phenotypes uh, and uh, these uh, two tools typically uh, can be combined into a workflow and uh, for this uh, reason uh, we are introducing NiPy. So where you can find these uh, new software updates and new tools, uh, maybe some of you, uh, you have uh, some experience, some practical experience with Jupyter Lab. Uh, and uh, now um, we have two new flavors, uh, Jupyter Lab flavors uh, and two new images. Uh, so now you can use you can use this and find this functionality under image processing flavor. Uh, you can find it when when you are spinning spinning up a new machine, new new Jupyter Lab session. You will find it under uh, or as a new feature, as as it's shown on the right side of this uh, screen. So basically what you can do, you can play around um, or play with all the functionality 
um, as uh, what uh, Fidel was uh, was describing and, and explaining. Perfect. So just uh, along with this uh, software update and just to support uh, su support you in your an analysis, uh, we also published, uh, we developed notebooks and we also published uh, that uh, as publicly available material. You can find it in our DNA Nexus uh, slash open bio repository. You can find there two notebooks. Uh, first of uh, them is showing image processing in FSL uh, plus NiPy. Uh, and then image processing um, using FreeSurfer, uh, and also visualizations are part of uh, these uh, notebooks. Uh, this is all done on uh, some publicly available data. So I'll be showing uh, some demo uh, later um, in this presentation. So mm, that's the new update on no notebooks. We recommend to try that. Uh, we recommend uh, to run it on UKB data, on, on real UKB data on your site. Yes. So here you can find link uh, to that. Uh, yeah. All right. So let's maybe jump to visualization part of this presentation. And here I would like to talk about a couple of uh, tips uh, and tricks and uh, extend uh, what we discussed uh, in uh, April. So let's uh, just uh, do some quick uh, recap uh, what we talked about uh, last time. Uh, last time we were mostly focusing on two main ways, how to visualize data in general and then on UK BRAP platform. Uh, we covered, we talked about non-interactive ways, how to visualize data. Uh, mostly we were showing some examples um, in a Jupyter Lab. Uh, we were commenting on libraries uh, such as PyDicom, NiBabel, or, or, or NiLearn, and how to apply it to uh, volume data. Uh, and uh, then we were uh, mentioning interactive ways how to work. Uh, yes, so we can review it here, uh, or you can uh, watch the recording to get more in, in information about that. So this time, uh, interestingly, uh, I would like to... Uh, talk about how to visualize data actually directly, not just like uh, by running DNA Nexus job, but how you can visualize data directly in your DNA Nexus project. No need to run Jupyter Lab, no need to run TTYB, uh, basically no need to run uh, DNA Nexus job. All right, we have several different methods to view data on the app. I would like to concentrate on uh, two main uh, options. Uh, first of them is to basically preview and open uh, some kind of file types directly in your project. Um, this is not only about imaging, but you have um, possibility to visualize many file formats. Typically, it could be TXT, uh, but not just plain TXT, but also any other text-based file fo format in bioinformatics. It could be FASTA file. More specifically, in neuroimaging or imaging, or let's say neuroimaging, it could be a results of FreeSurfer. Uh, then you can look at um, uh, pictures like uh, PNG or PDF, or um, uh, also you can open HTML file. Uh, how you can do that, uh, you will see example, uh, but, but when you click on uh, the object in your project, and uh, this belongs to one of these uh, uh, options, uh, you will find preview tab, preview button, uh, so you can click on it and, and, and the file will open. Um, then, second option, uh, more programmatic way, uh, you can use uh, something which is called file viewer. Uh, I am uh, linking here um, in the presentation to documentation page. Uh, if you are interested into this, you can read more about it and uh, you can try to create your own file viewer. Uh, and what you can actually do, you can like using file viewer, you can uh, visualize data uh, and use some existing web-based tools, uh, which is already available on the UK BRAP. I will provide some examples, or you can, as I mentioned, create new one, your, your custom one. So what is available on the RAP? This is not, um, this is not 
imaging or neuroinformatics. Uh, it's an uh, integrated genome viewer, uh, JavaScript based, but uh, you can learn a lot from the code. You can learn a lot how to may maybe convert this into um, more specific neuroimaging uh, viewer. Uh, then there is Jupyter Notebook Viewer. And uh, also for previewing your gzipped files, there is a gzipped uh, file viewer. Yes, and then of course you can create a new one uh, or custom custom viewer. I am adding a link to the documentation page here. All right, so how to actually run it? Uh, this is very simple. This is very simple and straightforward. Uh, in your project, you will find a tab which is called Visualize. And under this tab, you will find DNA Nexus viewers. Uh, there are three right now. Uh, it's that, uh, that's the IGV.js, that's the Jupyter uh, Notebook Previewer, uh, previewer, which is a really useful feature, um, and uh, then gzip file pre uh, pre previewer. Uh, but uh, you can always uh, create a new one. Perfect. So how you can actually create new one? Uh, you can create new one uh, if you are comfortable with HTML and uh, JavaScript. So it's more like developer uh, work. Uh, and uh, if you know this technology, HTML, mostly HTML and JavaScript, you can create custom uh, custom viewers. Uh, of course, you can inspire uh, from the already existing viewers, uh, download these viewers, uh, study the code, um, and uh, rewrite it uh, according to your needs. Uh, what would be our tip, uh, maybe for imaging and for image file handling on the platform, um, you can try to look at Nifty Viewer, or you can try to create a zip folder preview, because many of the file formats are zipped. Uh, so uh, that could be a good feature for, uh, let's say, rapid QC of uh, raw files. So uh, again, I'm uh, adding here a link to documentation page on how to create a custom viewer. Perfect. Uh, another topic um, which 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 uh, which belongs uh, to these uh, which belongs to these uh, visualization options and trips and tricks uh, and tricks. I would like to talk about uh, repeated IDPs uh, and how to visualize trajectories. Uh, actually. Uh, repeated IDPs is uh, something uh, what is connected to longitudinal analysis because typically for each IDP, image-derived phenotypes, um, uh, there, is, uh, there's, there is something which is called imaging visits. So you can access uh, this field ID or this IDP for multiple instances, uh, typically measured or typically uh, obtained uh, uh, during the time. So what you can typically do uh, here in as, as, as my recommendation or as my tip, I would use, I would run Jupyter Lab and I would use Python library Seaborn to create uh, some large number of uh, uh, facets and histograms and combine imaging visits, IDPs, uh, multiple um, other phenotypes and so on into the nicely looking plots. So, so that uh, that would be my tip for visualizing repeated uh, image derived phenotypes. All right, so now it's time for NiPipe demo. Uh, I uh, I am going to log into the platform and uh, share my screen. I am now sharing my. Uh, DNA Nexus project, uh, testing DNA Nexus uh, project on the regular DNA Nexus uh, platform. Uh, I followed uh, the uh, instructions or individual cells in one of the uh, notebooks in the public repository, and I, I tried to reproduce what was done in the image processing uh, FSL notebook in the open bio repository. So what we can do now, I will try to open it, uh, not via DNA Nexus job, but via Visualize tab and Jupyter Notebook pre Previewer and uh, tell you more about um, uh, important parts of the FSL and of the NiPy. Yeah. So here, what I can do, I can do either 
pre I can click on the preview uh, and uh, open open the uh, open the IPython notebook here. But what what I will do right now, I, I will go here. Uh, I'm on the regular platform, so I will uh, click on Jupyter Lab and open my notebook. This is not running the DNA Nexus job, and uh, I will mention here the main sections of this notebook. Uh, and would like to inspire you with uh, rerunning uh, this notebook for your UK BRAP uh, data. Uh, um, in the um, header part of, of this notebook, you can find how to prepare your environment. So I kind of uh, uh, followed these instructions um, and selected the um, recommended instance type. Let's say uh, we are here uh, working with... Uh, publicly available data uh, from fMRI uh, lab, from, 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 from the FSL group. Uh, we are uh, downloading and un un unzipping the file uh, here. Uh, then uh, in our notebook, we would like to install and uh, import uh, packages. Uh, yes, uh, here the essential or very important part is to import FSL because we would like to apply some transformations, some functions from FSL, and we will be doing it via NiPipe interface uh, and many other mm, mm, imports. Uh, but this is the this is the main uh, this is the uh, more most important uh, part uh, of these notebooks in terms of uh, import packages. Uh, then, as we downloaded our data, we can load this data. Uh, we are working with a nifty file, uh, as it was mentioned uh, during this presentation. It's a volume data, and uh, it could be um, uh, it could be represented or stored or saved um, in uh, gzip uh, format. So gzip here is uh, to produce a smaller file size, but uh, some of the neuroinformatics tools uh, can directly work with uh, gzip files and FSL is one of them. Perfect. Uh, for each file, for each nifty file, we can get some metadata information. Uh, at this moment, uh, we are trying to print uh, MRI shape, or we can look at uh, header of the nifty, uh, which is telling us more about image dimensions, data types, and other uh, measurements, um, details, and uh, metadata information, uh, right? And then in the next part, uh, we can try to first visualize uh, MRI slices. So how we can uh, do that? Uh, we can reuse this uh, code uh, snippet, but as a result of this, uh, we will get uh, three uh, projections or three orientations uh, and uh, this is uh, showing us, this is plotting a brain, uh, including uh, a skull here. So in the next section, what, would, what we are going to apply? Actually, we would like to apply the same operation as we showed uh, via Docker image uh, and Swiss Army knife. And this is the extract brain operation, or in other words, it's a skull stripping. So what we can do uh, here in the notebook, so we can, uh, as we imported uh, FSL via NiPipe, uh, we can create, uh, we can create FSL bat, FSL bat uh, node, uh, which is loading uh, input data and uh, which is uh, producing some result. And then we can run the object skull strip around uh, and this will, produ this will produce a derived uh, nifty file. So after processing this data, we will get uh, really the same output, uh, but now uh, we applied the brain extraction. Similarly, uh, we can apply other FSL functionali functions, uh, other FSL functionalities. Uh, one example could be uh, isotropic smooth operation. So uh, this will uh, lead to uh, smoothing operation on the image. Um, what is very um, important and what is a really nice feature is to combine, is to wrap these individual FSL operation into workflow. So 
uh, using NiPipe, actually, we can construct something what is called directed acyclic graph. And this is consisting of individual interfaces, as we, as we saw it, I mean, FSL, smooth FSL uh, brain extractions. These are nodes, and we can connect these interfaces as edges. So what we will do, we will first create nodes. So let's consider first node is a skull strip. Uh, actually, we are creating a node, which is doing some FSL operation, then some smoothing process. This, this is second one, second node. And then some let's let's add one one more, which would do FSL apply mask operation. And we can then initiate or create a workflow uh, which has some uh, specific name. And then we will connect uh, some uh, nodes uh, to form uh, edges uh, and create a workflow. So uh, then uh, once we create this workflow, we can visualize it. So now we have good representation and good understanding uh, of uh, which steps uh, our wor workflow um, consists, actually. And finally, at the end, uh, we would like to run it. So we can, we can run this workflow, and this workflow will compute all the steps and uh, produce the results. So once, once we are done with the computation, we can visualize results. And here on this... Uh, in this uh, plot, uh, we can see all the steps we done. We can see the input image, which was a T1 uh, nifty gzip file. We applied smoothing. We um, um, we computed brain mask, and we then apply smooth operation. So this was really quick um, demo of uh, what you can do or which type of advanced analysis, actually, I mean FSL, FreeSurfer, and combine it uh, into uh, NiPipe workflows you can do on the wrap. All right, so going back to the slides. And uh, I would like to kind of uh, wrap up and summarize the presentation. Uh, but before that, I would like to mention other options for working with, with imaging data on wrap. Uh, there are many options you can work with. Uh, we covered uh, we covered these tools um, either in uh, April or maybe today. Uh, but the options are cohort browser. You can work with Swiss Army knife, as we mentioned. Uh, there are many other options, but typically for neuroimaging, uh, this would be the NiPipe, as we showed. But also, you can try to create your workflow um, using Riddle. Uh, if you have um, knowledge or experience uh, resulting from your bioinformatics experience, uh, and uh, also you can uh, you can analyze your data uh, in uh, or using R Studio. So, and in all of these, you can do to some extent, or you can apply and train your machine learning models. So, uh, please uh, stay tuned. We are. Uh, preparing a session. We are planning a session which would be um, focused on, which would be devoted to uh, training machine learning models on image-derived phenotypes. So um, please uh, sign up for a newsletter. Please sign up for a community, more specifically here, imaging section. You can ask your questions there, uh, not just uh, limited to neuroimaging, uh, also, you can use uh, you can ask about uh, OCT, uh, but uh, as a, um, as kind of preview, uh, we would like to uh, cover how to work with image uh, derived phenotypes and how to let's say model uh, age based on brain volumes. All right, so yes, this is really the end of this part, and what I would like to mention as a last sentence is that you can always bring your old tools on the platform and one of the potential machine learning tool uh, or other imaging processing tool could be MATLAB. So uh, we can try to uh, deploy this on the UKB wrap.